Hi everyone, my name is Olga and this is Primeland. Hi everyone, I'm Jana and today we'd like to talk about something very important, um, namely about the IELTS exam. One of our viewers has left a comment asking us to do just that. So we are, you know, we're fulfilling the request. Right, so we are going, uh, in this video, we are going to just give an overview of this exam. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, what it consists of and um, hopefully in future videos we will um, deal uh, with each aspect specifically. We will focus uh, uh, on some details and uh, uh, try to give some useful tips as to how to prepare best. Yes, and if so, you have, uh, sorry, if yeah. you have anything uh, in particular that you'd like us to discuss, uh, please uh, drop us comments. You know, let us know in any way you want. Uh, we'd be happy to to answer any questions you might have. So, but now we'll start with the overview. Right. So first of uh, the first thing that you probably should know about dials, and I think it's uh, something that not everybody knows and not everybody keeps in mind when preparing that uh, there are two types of this exam, the academic IELTS and the general IELTS. Mm -hmm. And um, the academic one is for those who is going uh, to study abroad. Um, and um, whereas general IELTS uh, is for people who want to um, work and uh, not study. Mm -hmm. So there are slight differences between these two types. They are not uh, really significant, but still um, you should um, pay attention to them when you prepare. Well, anyway, so um, yes, so be careful, be sure to know which exam you need when you're choosing the exam, be sure to choose the right one. And um, so in the academic aisles, the reading and the writing are, um, is more difficult than in, in general one. And in general, some of the tasks are slightly different. But other than that, everything is pretty much the same. And um, so now about the duration of the exam and the, the exam itself. First, there are, uh, you should know that there are four aspects that are being assessed at your exam, uh, listening, reading, uh, writing and speaking, all the four um, uh, skills. Uh, let's see, duration. Listening is 30 minutes long uh, with 40 minutes. Then what else? Then the reading is 60 minutes and writing also 60 minutes and speaking is 11 minutes, 11 to 14 minutes long. And we'll discuss in a, not in detail, but we'll just give a very brief overview of each of the aspects, right, Olga? Okay, so, and we'll start with uh, the listening, which um, consists of uh, 40 questions and uh, four um, sections, pieces for fragments uh, you have to listen to. So um, you must know, one thing you must know about it, that uh, they go from the easy to the more difficult. So uh, they get more difficult with each uh, following uh, fragment. And um, what you will um, have at the beginning is probably something like a conversation between a, a travel ag agent and um, a tourist uh, or something, some, some people asking for some information. So something really general and um, Pretty easy. Uh, so uh, whereas by the end of this section, you will probably get uh, some uh, um, part of a lecture or something like that. So something more um, academic. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, these 40 questions will be of different types. So once again, we will look at um, all the types and um, talk about how to prepare uh, for them um, in our video dedicated to this section, to this aspect. But uh, for now, I can just mention that you will have um, gap filling, you will have a matching, uh, you will have multiple choice uh, and uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, after you've, you've finished with the uh, listening, right off, uh, there will be reading section. Reading section, like I said before, is 60 minutes long and there will be three passages um pretty long about maybe 1500 uh, 2000 uh words and um they will be of course on academic topics but the first one is usually pretty easy it's more factual and something like this uh, whereas this the third one for example it will be more 
you know, maybe about something, some psychological issues or something like this, uh, someone's opinions, someone's, uh, you know, speculations on different things. And um, so all these texts are taken from some textbooks or from press or from, it, they might be slightly adapted, which doesn't mean that they're made easier. It just means that they are slightly shortened for, for the sake of the exam. And uh, also the type of questions is similar to what you will have in the, in the listening. You, will, you might have uh, matching or you will have um, true false not given. Um, let's see what else. You might have some uh, multiple choice questions and so on and so forth. Also it's 40 questions. Yes, and then. Okay, uh, yes, and um, uh... Well, we should probably mention that uh, reading is one of those sections where the general and the academic aisles um, actually differ. And right. uh, in the general exam, uh, the text will not be as academic uh, as um, in the academic one, obviously. So they will be easier. That's one of the two main differences between these two exams. Mm -hmm. And the other one concerns writing. We are going to talk about writing right now. So writing uh, includes uh, two essays a smaller one and a bigger one. So the smaller one uh, sh should be around 160 words and um, the bigger one about uh, starting from, let's say, 260 words and uh, more, up to maybe 300. Some, some people claim that it can be even more than that. And um, you have one hour for that. Uh, so you are supposed to have about 20 minutes for the smaller essay and 40 minutes for the bigger one. But um, it's up to you in the end, how you divide this time. So this is just advice to do it like this, but you have your hour and you do it uh, with it mostly what you want. Mm -hmm. um, so the smaller essay is uh, in the academic aisles. It's uh, a description of a graph. So you get a graph, a table, or maybe uh, two graphs, two charts, and um, you should uh, just describe in this graph, uh, in this, sorry, in this essay, what you see in the graph. So you just, just should just um, um, pick up the most essential information, uh, not state your own opinion, uh, not make any conclusions, any personal conclusions. So you just uh, write what you see. That's the idea. You should be able to present the information. Mm -hmm. In the uh, so that's a pretty specific uh, and I think um, not a very easy task in. Uh, uh, in the sense that you really have to know how to deal with it and what to do with it. But once you no, once you look into it, it's very easy. You just um, follow this pattern and uh, write what you see. So you should just be able to interpret graphs correctly. That's mostly about your logic as well. Uh, in the general aisles, you will have uh, uh, an email to write. And uh, the bigger essay is an argumentative essay. So it's an essay where you have to present your opinion. You are given a a topic with a problem and uh, most likely it will have uh, two sides to it so you can either agree or disagree sometimes you are asked to what extent you agree so now there are several types of um, topics but uh, I'd say that the general idea is like this you should be able to develop the argument so you uh, introduce the problem you write several arguments you express your point of view you uh, add arguments to this point of view to support it and you draw a conclusion okay yes so that's mm -hmm. about writing Right. Okay. And the final one is speaking. Uh, speaking exam can be held on the same day after the break. You will definitely get a break after these three uh, written tasks. Uh, or sometimes you can you might you might get speaking exam on another day. Uh, they usually give you the date uh, at the test center, so you you can you'll be able to plan your time and you'll know it in advance whether whether the speaking is in the same on the same day or not. So speaking is uh, uh, you as a candidate are one to one one on one with you, with a teacher with the examiner, and you you must know that speaking is recorded. It's uh, there's an audio recorder on, and so um, it. The duration is, like I said before, 11 to 14 minutes. Um, and there are three parts. The first part is just a, a, your conversation with the examiner, just, you know, on very general uh, 
subjects to get you comfortable, to get you relaxed. You know, they might ask you where you're from and something like this, you know, what you like about what hobbies you have and something. So things like this. And um, then after that, they, you will be given a topic um, on which you you'll have to speak uh, for two minutes. You'll be given a, a card with the topic and some question, questions that which you must answer. And then you'll be given a minute to think about this. You might take notes and everything. Uh, then you speak for two minutes and right, the, uh, right after that, part three begins. There are, by the way, what's important, there are no breaks between part one and part two and part three. Nobody is going to say, okay, now let's start part one and, or let's start part two. It just uh, kind of flows. And if you're comfortable speaking, you will hardly notice that you're actually doing one part or, an, or another. Or, and anyway, in the third part, it's again, conversation with the examiner. Only this time, it is uh, con it's kind of you continue the same subject or similar subject which you were talking about in your part two question. And the examiner will ask you slightly more difficult questions, well, more challenging questions, uh, for example, about situation in a country, about something um, or with something. Uh, so these, these um, questions will be slightly, they will require uh, longer answers. And, you know, this is it after you've done um, this, after you've finished this exam, after 14 minutes, you are free to fly and wait for the results. Usually the results come in uh, I think two weeks, two, three weeks, sometimes even one week. But usually, uh, according to my experience, my students uh, received results two weeks after the exam. So. Yes, and we probably should also mention about the results that uh, um, the highest score uh, at this exam is nine. So right. uh, you can get a score from, I don't know, zero to nine. And the reason such a thing as... Uh, good or bad or uh, fail or pass or something like yes that, fail right? or pass right so uh it just depends on what you need so some uh, colleges may require uh, a score as low as i know 4.5 or 5 mm -hmm. i think it's a pretty low score that's like a intermediate level mm -hmm. and uh, well if you are doing some uh, something language related it uh, can be as high as seven i think nobody requires more than that uh, and uh, in fact, I think if you get a nine, you have uh, you have the chance uh, to become an IELTS examiner or something like this. So it's a really um, challenging and good score to get. Mm -hmm. um, right. Okay. And I think uh, this is all we wanted to share with you today. So thanks mm -hmm. for watching our video. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and um, see right. you soon. Bye bye.